Yep. So yeah, I think take it easy and and but do something consistently over a long period of time. That that would be my takeaway and mm -hmm. hopefully an answer to the question. You, you talked about the productivity stuff, right? And and focusing on that this year a little bit. And and to everyone's uh, for everyone's credit and benefit here, the we constantly get people mentioning our productivity course that we've done. And this isn't a plug. This is more the reasoning why. Uh, and because it, it helps people with their goal setting. You know. Hello and welcome to the PyBytes podcast, where we talk about Python, career, and mindset. We're your hosts. I'm Julian Sequeira. And I am Bob Beldebos. If you're looking to improve your Python, your career, and learn the mindset for success, this is the podcast for you. Let's get started. And we're back. Happy 2023 from PyBytes. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm good, man. Welcome everyone to the PyBytes podcast. <laughs> we forgot been... how to do introductions after three weeks off. Totally lame, <laughs> rusty. It's time to get yeah. back into it, right? <laughs> exactly i love it um but it is a nice slow week as we ramp up to being back full-time next week but thought we would have a nice happy new year podcast episode for everyone and also uh, a celebratory one so what are we what are we celebrating i got a new background not enough <laughs> and me too look at this beautiful white. this is for the youtube watchers uh this beautiful white curtain uh, but we can explain that in a little Showing bit. Showing the logo What's... on your shirt. It's probably PyBytes related then. Oh, right? yeah. PyBytes shirt. It is, it is PyBytes related. What is it? Six years. Six 19th years. 19th of December 2022. We hit that yep. milestone. So while I was away on holiday at the beach with the family, because we do beach stuff in Australia at Christmas, um, <laughs> we celebrated our sixth year of PyBytes, which is just incredible. And uh, super awesome. How did how did you feel when we when we hit that day, the nineteenth? Yeah, really happy. I mean, we could never have envisioned what Pi Bytes is right now, right? Because we literally started over Christmas with this hobby project of doing some sort of <laughs> Python blog, mm. teaching and learning Python, and that that was all there was to it. Writing articles and stuff. Uh, but yeah, yeah. then from one thing came the other: platform courses, coaching, and it, to me, it just showed, yeah, a lot of persistence, grit, and also just rolling with the punches, right? And, and innovate as you go. So yeah, it was a nice reminder of that. Mm, definitely, I, I had this, I had this sense of pride, you know, uh, just this this pride of what we've accomplished in six years that we didn't expect to be able to do. But uh, going back to our normal mantra of just taking off tiny chunks at a time, little pieces just shows how much we've accomplished with taking one little step at a time, baby mm. steps, one after the other. They were, they may have been scary as all hell. <laughs> they were over jagged spikes and stuff, but they were still baby steps. And uh, to see what we've accomplished, I actually spoke to a friend today on the phone who said that it's every time I talk to you, it's nice to hear that you and Bob always have something coming you always have something to look forward to there's always one more thing to uh coming what's next? from you what's guys next? to do what's next what's next, what's next? exactly so <laughs> that yeah. made me feel good i was like oh yeah it is true that's motivation right there to have that and yeah but i did say i did say that stuff doesn't come easy right it doesn't just come out of thin air it comes from you and i chatting and uh, testing and playing and and you know brainstorming so pushing outside your night. comfort zone right exactly Exactly. Yeah. So be before we get into the goals for this year, because this episode, everyone, if you're listening, watching, whatever, um, not traditional goal setting podcast episode where everyone's like, oh, set your goals for the year. And, you know, uh, we do have a, a different take on that this year, slightly different. But before we do that, you know, Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you for being a a supporter of pod, uh, Pi Bytes, not podcast, of Pi Bytes for however long it happens to have been. If you've been here for the full six years, thank you. If you've been here for seven years, well, ooh, special. Um, but, <laughs> but I want to ask you, Bob, because we're indulging for a minute here because we haven't spoken. Bob and I haven't spoken in about three weeks. So how were your holidays? What did you get up to? Wow. Yeah, well, well 
<laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, it was really good to take a break. We, I think we both were burning out a little bit in, mm. you know, effort spend and, and pushing. Um, the great thing about breaks, and we spoke about this many times on the podcast, um, is that you kind of um, are forced to take a step back and, and reflect. And there was a lot of that, right? Like, ooh, the microphone just moved. <laughs> Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> All right. So um, I went in, was doing a lot of advent of code, a lot of coding, even went on learning algorithms. And I came out like, yeah, that's all nice, but let's focus on the business and the bigger pieces, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, it was really time for me to reflect and um, came out back fresh, uh, rested, and with a lot of inspiration, as usual, and better focus. So, mm -hmm. again, if you can take a break, it's not a luxury. It's kind of a, a longer-term productivity hack where you actually move the ladder from the wrong building to the right building and you start mm -hmm. climbing in the right direction to talk with. Stephen Covey, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seven so minutes. it was good. And obviously, there was the family, the kids, celebrations. So that's awesome. What about you? Yeah, nice. Mine, mine was um, definitely more family focused in the sense that from, you know, the last last week that we worked Pie Bites, that I think you were recording the podcast episode with, um, who was the last guest we had on the podcast? Kristen. Kristen. That's it. Um, I was in South Korea when, when you were doing that. So that's why I couldn't do it. I was in Seoul. So I was traveling. I got to have some cold Christmassy sort of stuff. So that was nice. But when I came back that, you know, three weeks of annual leave kicked off and um, it was just full family. I think three days after I got back from there, we were up the coast um, at a beach town, my favorite beach town in Australia that I've been to uh, called Fingal Bay. And um we spent a week there with the kids and my, my sister-in-law is here visiting from Canada and it's a full house, you know, where that, that's why for those of you watching, I'm not in my normal uh, study slash office because that's where my sister-in-law is sleeping. And so I'm out in a weird sort of living room <laughs> with a window behind me. Um, and it's just been, it's been really different, you know, because I spent all of 2022 pushing every night of the week working on pie bites and, and, you know, just constantly growth mindset. And this was the first time in, in quite a bit that I've sat there and actually said, no, nothing. Kids only family only relaxation only uh, even reading just all fiction. I even signed up to a comic book subscription with Marvel and I uh, was reading those guilt-free. Yeah. And it was really nice. It was really nice to, take that step back and completely disconnect. I didn't check Slack. I didn't check email. I didn't check anything aside from WhatsApp messages from you. And it was absolutely delightful. I had the best time. Uh, I was present with the kids. Uh, I was half dead from the amount of late nights with family and friends and <laughs> especially New Year's and everything like that. It was just amazing. And it really showed me that for this year in 2023, and this is maybe a bit of a segue into the goal setting stuff. Uh, I just want to see a little more of that. I don't want it to be so heavy on pushing for the business and career growth and everything like that. I do want to make sure that I'm actively at certain key points, maybe, or maybe using the kids school holidays as an excuse. Um, I want to step back and take some more of that time to have more of these moments throughout the year. So it was, it was a lovely time though, especially when you've got summer, summer here, we're in the pool every day and everything like that. Well, it's definitely sunny here as you can see as well. Yeah. You're <laughs> squinting, <laughs> but um, I'm happy to hear that. And um, yeah, I think a few takeaways, right? If you take a break, do it properly. If you mm -hmm. take a break and you're still doing a lot of work related stuff or checking Slack, then you're not really having a break. Um, yep. So then it, defeats the purpose right and yeah i think we it's it's very hard to do as well i think the first week first days we were still pretty connected and hmm. thinking about stuff yeah. and it only kind of works if you're four or five days in right um and yeah the other takeaway lesson is yeah like you realize how precious these moments are um with family hmm. and friends and even reading a book and yeah if Work tends to fill everything. Like you can work 40 hours, still work. You can work 50 hours. There's still more work. You can like fill 80 hours and still have work. 
Yeah. Uh, but is it all important, right? And with a break, you kind of realize, well, wow, this hour of reading or hour with the family is super precious. And mm. is that really worth like pushing another hour after six? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Like things can, can wait. wait. Tomorrow. So yeah. yeah. Exactly. And look, proof, proof in the pudding for again our YouTube viewers. I haven't shaved since Christmas Eve. So on the twenty fourth of December is when I shaved last and it's a I'm feeling the beard. So I, I do feel like I <laughs> that never happens with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. So let's let's dive in. So thank you all for for sharing in that with us and and uh, letting us share a bit of what we've been up to the past few weeks. Um, we are going to quickly talk about goals. Now, when when you talk about your goals in 2023, uh, it's tr- traditional New Year's resolution. You know, what are you going to do? I'm going to lose 100 kilos. I'm going to uh, you know go to the gym every week. I'm going to uh, learn Python. That sort of stuff. Our right? inbox and- is full of those. New Year's yeah, exactly. emails. <laughs> so many emails from different places, whether it be, I don't know, cleaning companies, whether it be shopping companies, who knows, even, not just places like Python websites and stuff, but everyone is talking about New Year's resolutions and we hate it um, because they tend to focus on being such sweeping changes and as we alluded to, Pi Bytes over six years were not was not just like one big bang done. We're here. It was small steps, baby steps. And so when you when people think about New Year's resolutions, they tend to be thinking about um, very large scale sweeping changes that you know essentially you're trying to boil the ocean, and they wind up seeming insurmountable. You think I'll wait till February. I'll wait till March. Oh, it's April now. I haven't even done this. So do I even bother? I'm already quarter through the year, you know. So that can be a really dangerous, uh, dangerous thing. Take a sip of water. You're done. Sorry. Just before <laughs> we recorded, I choked on a bit of water and it's it's right in my throat. <laughs> anyway. So one thing I do want to challenge you all with, and bye bye. So I'm sorry, I'm taking the microphone this this time. Um, but I have been go, thinking about this. I've been thinking about this. Um, it's not right to set your goals and your New Year's resolutions. So I do believe you should be setting goals, one hundred percent. Set yourself some goals for the year. Don't don't step around that and use this as an excuse not to do it. I'm not giving you a way out. Um, the point here is to do it when you're in the right frame of mind. Now, if you are still on holidays, don't do that. Don't set your goals now. Not a chance because you're not in your normal routine. You don't have the same level of stress, of workload, of responsibility that you have for 99% of the rest of the year, right? If you're doing this while sitting on a beach or um, most of the people in North America are somehow in a log cabin, sipping hot chocolate by a fire and it's snowing, I'm I'm very, very much generalizing here, Uh, unless you're in California and you're currently in a heat wave or something. you're, if you're on holiday, it's not the right time to be setting your goals. You know, you, that's when you can do some dreaming. That's when you can think about some goals because you're clear-minded, right? But setting realistic goals, goals that are achievable, do that when you are back in your routine. Um, I'm going to stop talking there for a second. Bob, did you have any thoughts on that? No, that's kind of funny because when I was recording you a uh, WhatsApp message yesterday, it was yesterday the first work day, right? And of course, I hit it hard, and uh, it also the kids were out um, spending some time with sister in law, right? So I went from a week without kids and without work <laughs> to um, a week where you know they're still at home, they're not at school, they still have holidays. Plus, you have to pay rights work, and like, oh my god, I realize how how much how little time you actually have for your own stuff, right? So it's way mm-hmm. more realistic to think about goals now in this setting. And as well as when off week, because then you think, oh, I can conquer the world and I have so much time and not realistic, right? So yeah, um, you kind of, that's a good point, I think. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, some of the things I want to achieve this year involve, and it was purely because I fell in love with the the city, uh, Seoul in South Korea. Um, I want to learn some Korean. So given that I want to learn Korean, I would love to, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, oh, I want to, you know, pick up my guitar again and keep going. 
uh, given I want to grow pie bites more, uh, do all sorts of different things like that, you know, be present with the kids and so on. It's great to list that out now before I'm back in my normal routine. So for example, the kids are still home on school holidays to the end of January. My, my sister-in-law is still here to the end of January. So whatever I pick up and do now is going to still feel like I'm on holidays until I'm back in that routine and the kids have started school. Um, and I can list out all the things that I want to do this year, how many books I want to read. I'm going to read 50 books this year, Bob. You know, I'm going to put it on Pie Bites Books. There's a plug for the platform. Nice. Um, <laughs> I'm going to read 50 books, all that stuff. But then as soon as I'm back in that full routine, I'm going to say, where am I going to fit all that in? How on earth am I going to do that? So my challenge to you listening to this or watching this is think of your goals, but until you're back in your routine, or at the very least, if you can, if you know what your routine is going to be when everything gets back on track and traffic picks up again and your commutes start to happen and kids are going to school and, and whatever else is on your plate, if you can predict what that's going to look like, then start setting goals around that. And it might mean actually lowering the expectation you have on yourself, but that's okay because that means it's achievable and getting somewhere is better than getting nowhere, right? Because something seems so insurmountable. Um, so Bob, what's just an example for everyone, unless you wanted to say something else, <laughs> um, what's an example of a goal you're setting for yourself this year? It's a great question. Yeah. I'm not I'm not yet in the mindset for that, I guess. Um no, <laughs> we we did our goal setting exercise yesterday, right? So a lot of my yep. goals are aligned with the business. Um and that's growing PDM, the coaching. We want to push hard on the schools and we want to also push hard on the productivity because we have a course mm -hmm. that that's really getting people results and we want to further build that out, right? Because <laughs> the reason we talk a lot about productivity on this podcast is because uh, a lot of people struggle with us, with it. Um, and it's, it's a constant battle with increasing work demands, social media, distractions, internet overall. Mm. Um, so that's definitely something we see potential as well. Right. So definitely goals there. And I don't do any number of book read goals. Um, <laughs> no. That's kind of, I, I think, and that's, that's what I do want to mention. Uh, there's this great interview by Ryan Holiday uh, when he had um, James Clear on the show and he recasted that on his podcast. And Atomic Habits, right? It's one of her favorite um, productivity books. I uh, really should read it. And one thing I picked up from that episode is just love the process, process right? Like mm. you, you should set your goals, of course, but fall in love with the process because it's going to get hard um, it's going to be tough. There will be setbacks, but if you just love what you do and you can just do that for two hours a day, for example, right? Mm -hmm. If in, a lot of people, for example, cannot even phantom how to write a book, but then both authors on that podcast are saying, well, just put two quality time hours in a day, right? And then be happy with that. Don't push for eight hours, right? Do, do things in small increments. And it also, goes back to to pie bites right like we have had good and bad months but it was the consistency overall over a long period that got us results and i love that quote i've mentioned it the year before but people often often overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years and mm. you should really see it as a marathon right so see it as a yeah. marathon fall in love with the pr process do a bit of work every day and then after years you will just can have a major impact Right. Yeah. So I think that's that's kind of the, the the problem with goals. People take it sometimes as a crash diet kind of thing, like mm. six pack in thirty days, right? And then they go all out, <laughs> create some insustainable habits of three hour workouts and and <laughs> eighteen hundred calories or something ridiculous, you know. And then yeah, February comes and they're they have this um, boomerang effect, right? That they they go yeah back to even worse as it was before because it, this is way too demanding right yep so yeah i think take it easy and and but do something consistently over a long period of time that that would be my takeaway and mm -hmm. hopefully an answer to the question <laughs> i don't even know what the question was anymore to be yeah honest, about but... goals so instead of a specific <laughs> goal i give you more like the philosophy no no look, you you talked about the productivity stuff right and and focusing on that this year a little bit and and to everyone's uh for everyone's credit benefit here the 
we constantly get people mentioning our productivity course that we've done. And this isn't a plug. This is more the reasoning why. Uh, and because it, it helps people with their goal setting and it helps people achieve those goals that we're encouraging you to set for yourself when you're in the right frame of mind. Um, but that productivity course, it's like this thing we made that people are saying is just incredible. Hey, this is Bob and a quick break from our episode. We're right back because we want to give you an opportunity to learn about our PyBytes Practical Productivity Pack. Yep, this is a pack that is designed to help you be more productive. It's not as simple as that because there are so many pieces to productivity. There's mindset and there's a heck of a lot of best practices to put into play here to really help you get there. And that's exactly what this course is designed to do. So what's inside the pack? All right. To start, there are seven modules and we start off with module one, as you'd expect, which is all about a time audit. We move into goal setting, planning, habits, deep work, motivation, and end on perfectionism. These are really important pieces to help you break the habits you have, build good habits, and really start getting your productivity boosted. And all this in less than four hours of concise video content. Check out more information about the course at pybytesproductivity.com. Everyone who takes it and, and actually implements is talking about how life-changing it's been, right? And we've mentioned that before, but because of that, we really want to do something with it. And that's a goal we're setting for ourselves this year is to really grow that, get it out there, uh, build on it and um, do more because it has helped people from a non-Python perspective, which is incredible to us because we built it for Python programmers, right? And uh, with coders in mind, but the, I guess the, the things we talk about in there are just so universal that it doesn't matter whether you're a coder or not, it can help. And that's why we, we really want to do that because it makes sense to get it further out there, help more people and so on and so forth. But on that note, the other goal that I wanted to mention that we set, and this is us adding some accountability to what we're working on, uh, just letting everyone know, uh, it's part one of our steps, right, to success is getting your stuff out there. Um, we want to grow the school, the school tier on our coding platform, the PyBytes platform, codechallenge.es. Uh, we want to see more schools using that this year because the results that other schools are getting across the US that are using it. Uh, fantastic. The students are loving it. We're loving seeing their feedback and seeing them holding certificates and things like that. And we just want to see it in schools. And me personally, like Bob, I said this to you yesterday, me personally, it'd be a sense of um, pride to see it used in Australian schools. So that's uh, one of the things I'll be focusing a chunking part of my time on to building that out and uh, around curriculum and syllabus here in um, the syllabus here in Australia. and going with that so we'll see that, how that goes that's super exciting i'm really excited about that and uh yeah we have kids ourselves right well, we know the value mm. of of teaching them and yeah thinking about the next generation of programmers and, and yeah. getting that's that's why i like the philosophy of PyScript as well which i started learning yesterday like one of mm. its goals is just to make python accessible to more people by making it possible to code in a browser and that's just really a very nice aim and yeah similarly if we can get um, python in the hands of more students and give them a better way to learn it an easier way mm. that it gets them results uh, moving forward that's yeah amazing so we're really mm. uh, really excited about that yeah and, the, and just to add to what you said the thing for me is that it doesn't just teach them an easier way but it teaches them in a way that is more realistic to real world programming not just some you know flashy game where they solve a puzzle and slay a dragon you know that's not how it works in the real world so there are no dragons that's funny right we spoke about this with mm. russell on the podcast here before uh, mm. and i mean if you look at the newbie bytes they're actually pretty boring right it's text and, and a coding editor and so what, what would be the appeal for younger students <laughs> exactly. but then we got the feedback <laughs> like they, they like it more than the actual gamey stuff because it's actually addicting solving them and getting credits and and so, seeing yeah. pie test pass or fail <laughs> yeah yeah looking at that horrendous output <laughs> yeah exactly As we never so, expected that so again goes to show you just have to roll with the punches get stuff out there and then iterate over the feedback yeah 
exactly. So to recap, as we wrap this very casual first episode for 2023, let's see. I hope we can get away with that. There was some value in it though, right? Yeah. So I'm going to wrap it up. Let's 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 uh, paraphrase. So what we want you to do here's the takeaway from this is um, set your goals when you're in the right frame of mind, understanding that you're going to have a very very busy schedule, right? You have things you need to do. You have responsibilities and you have to set realistic goals that when you break them down to the actionable steps to actually get them done, they're actually things you can fit into your daily responsibilities. It's, it's not, it's not an easy, it's not a, it's not an easy task to do, but this is a simple task to do, right? You know what it is that you'll be doing day to day once you're off holidays. Um, what is it that you can realistically achieve? And if you need to make sacrifices, think about that, right? And one thing I'll add in here that we forgot to mention, Bob, um, is it might help you motivationally to visualize yourself sitting in the same spot that you are now in 2024. And what is it that you're going to say that you did over the past 12 months from this moment until then? and how do you want to feel in that moment in 2024? Um, what do you want to have accomplished? This can help you figure out what the goals are, but then remember, make them realistic. Because I think I'd feel pretty fantastic if I was, I don't know, sitting in a private jet. <laughs> no, actually, I think it'd be pretty boring, but you know what I'm saying. Um, horrible goal. But yeah. It's a horrible yeah. goal, no. But I'd, I'd feel pretty good with some pretty extravagant things. Um for a for a moment, of course, I'm only human, but to achieve those in a year, not realistic, right? What's more realistic is that we grow into say having pie bites in twenty different schools by 2024. That would be pretty realistic. That's doable. And that involves a bit of work, and I can chunk that down into you know weekly work through 2023. So think of it that way. Think about how you can fit it into your routine. Don't let it overwhelm you. Um, small chunks, small pieces, baby steps. And um, we look forward to hearing what you put down. So if you do get value out of this, please message us, please email us, um, respond to us in, on one of the many platforms that we operate on and let us know, you know, what you've done, what you've planned for this year. We'd love to hear it. By all means, reach out, info at Highlights and yeah, on the social media. Hey, yeah, just to add on that, just think long term, right? Um, I remember mm. we had some very specific goals for the year, but we also had some seeding goals, as we um, started to call them, that would just have less impact this year, but would set up a, set us up for success in the coming years, right? So, yeah, again, think long term. You can definitely think big, uh, but being realistic, you can only get so much done in this year. But that's fine if you keep doing that consistently over the years. Yep, exactly. Cool. All right. Well, that's that. So, Bob, um, at at the risk of inundating everyone's ears or whatever, have you read any books? <laughs> oh, my God. I uh, I stopped buying <laughs> books, actually. Weeks. I went to the public uh, library. That's for yes. starters. Love the library. If, uh, hey, that's actually, amazing. PSA, public service announcement, if you have not been to your local library, please go. They are so valuable. I love going to the library. I just um, signed up to our library up near this new house, but they were closed for the Christmas holidays. <laughs> it's not only about taking books, right? Um, and, and saving on buying books. Uh, it's just sitting there and be surrounded by books. It's just uh, mm. it's really nice. Uh, some quiet, Very therapeutic, in, in crowded uh, <laughs> space these days. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm, de- I'm going to read Atomic Habits. I just want to reemphasize that. That's really a book <laughs> well-timed. <laughs> um, I mean, it sold 10 million copies. Can you believe that? It's just mm. uh, amazing. Um, and yeah, I think we're both reading The Body by Bryson. Yes. Uh, yeah. Lots still to plow through, but fascinating mm. read. Um, yeah, and I've read a book on um, on dieting, so in mm. Spanish. So um, title might not make sense, but yeah, just conscious about, yeah the poison that they sell in supermarkets. So you really yeah. have to be picky. So that that is that was a good read. And um yeah, various miscellaneous. You? Cool. Um not too much. Well, some, 
I, I've so I've read clearly a bunch of comics. <laughs> my my cup of tea. I love it. So I've read a bunch of comics, which is fantastic. Um, I'm reading The Body, as you mentioned, by Bill Bryson. Um, I'm finding that, you know, it is a fun read, but it's not something that draws me back. I have to read it every day. So I'm just going back in every couple of days to read a chapter. Um, I'm currently about halfway through the Wizard of, of Earthsea book two, the Tombs of Atuan. I think that's how you say it. Um, so that, that's been, it's fun to pick that up again. Re, so reading that. And um, what was the other thing? Oh, the other thing I'm doing, it, it's not quite reading, but it's, I'm doing another masterclass um, on sustainability and eating. So it, long story short, it's more about understanding the food chain and where our food comes from and not saying that I'm just going to go organic and all that sort of stuff, but understanding where your food comes from. Um, that's what it's taught me so far is, is, is that it's quite important and um, making your choices on what you do eat, what you don't eat. Now, mind you, it is based on the American food system, um, the food chain, which is very different, I think, to the Australian stuff. Um but, and I won't go into all that detail now. That's, that's a whole different, if anyone wants to know about it, you know, have a chat with me. I'd love to have a conversation. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very interesting. I'm really enjoying it. It's a nice way of doing some, you know, thoughtful growth consumption there that isn't Python related or mindset related. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, different medium. I like it. Yeah, and to keep it technical, I also pulled out a classic I want to revisit oh, here we go. this year. Code complete yeah. two. Nice. Second edition. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, second edition. Right. Yeah. So really going back to the um, the fundamentals. So it's a really good book um about yeah, coding related mm. stuff. No, to keep it technical, then I'm gonna do some soldering tomorrow with the kids. I'm so excited. No, nice. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> That's part of my sustainability push for the year is to reuse and recycle. So I found a, a broken bit of equipment at home and I thought, well, may as well open it up and see. And I actually found where the break was. And uh, so I cracked out the soldering iron and um, I'm going to show them how to do it tomorrow. We'll see if we can repair it. Let's Why see not? if you can show something next time on camera. On camera. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, look, everyone, All thank right. you for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching if you're on YouTube. And uh, we appreciate all of you. Again, six years is huge for us. We're super proud. And um, I think the thing, Bob, I'm speaking for you here is that the thing we enjoy the most is the people. This wouldn't be what mm -hmm. it is without all of you. We love and appreciate everyone who's crossed paths with, paths with us. We know that time is the greatest gift you can give. So anyone who's given us any form of time, even if it is just listening to these podcasts, we appreciate you and uh, we're happy that you're here. Totally. Yeah. It's, it's a lot about Python and content, but in the end, the relations we have built through PyBytes um, and thanks to our community have been invaluable. And that's really what it's all about. Yep, definitely a lot of lifelong friendships there as well. So thank you, everyone. Uh, we will be back next week with our 100th Pie Bites podcast episode. Oh, so excited. Very, very special episode. And talking about community, by the way, maybe some people mm -hmm. don't know, we also have a Slack community. So we'll link that below, uh, pybit.es slash community. And I'll be in there. It's a very friendly place. And um, yeah, uh, people share python developer mindset related things and um, yeah you can get a lot of value out of that beautiful all right well tune in next week for the 100th episode which we're very excited about i, I don't even know what we're going to do but we'll we'll figure out something um we'll see. <laughs> yeah putting us on and putting us on the spot here yeah. all right everyone take care thank you for listening and watching and we'll back, be back next week all right cheers We hope you enjoyed this episode. To hear more from us, go to PyBytes slash friends. That is pybit.es slash friends and receive a free gift just for being a friend of the show. And to join our thriving Slack community of Python programmers, go to pybytes slash community. That's pybit.es forward slash community. We hope to see you there and catch you in the next episode.